Hey guys, this is a quickie about a weird encounter I had with some Muslims on a video blog slash podcast or whatever that runs on for 10 or 12 or whatever hours, hosted by a guy calling himself Sir Faz, where Muslims seem to hang out and just, you know, just, just chat about who did what to whom and what happened to whom, where, the, and, it, it, and it seems as there's always Muslims on there. And when Rob asked me a couple days ago when I was bored, I agreed to have a chat with them. Now, I don't know these people from a bar of soap, okay? And it took a while to install this and set up and, and until I could eventually click on ask to join. Now, I clicked on this and I suddenly, I could hear people talking in what seemed to be a chat room where Rob was already hot under the collar, frustrated by a Muslim who simply could not formulate anything and kept on saying he was right. So Rob eventually let go of the poor guy and, and let me speak. I introduced myself, answered the question why I was addressing Islam, and a guy talked to me. And this was like a surreal movie or, or, or like a dream where a guy keeps telling you what you are and, and what you're doing, what you're thinking and what you what you are representing. And you know that you're not. Only take what I am saying and not what you think I'm saying and don't project, please. Don't misrepresent me. I'd really appreciate that. And he's just keeping on, insisting I'm like Tommy Robinson, someone he's apparently really scared of. And he kept saying, I don't know who Tommy Robinson or so he knows who Tommy Robinson is, but I don't like Tommy Robinson. I don't know who he he. It was like he kept denying that he had anything in common with Tommy Robinson. Now, I don't know Tommy Robinson apart from a few videos and his impressive performance in Speaker's Corner in support of free speech, which is something that is dear to my heart and of fundamental importance in societies in the twenty first century. But other than that. I, I know I disagree with just about everything else that Tommy Robinson stands for. So I was not at all impressed being told I am Tommy Robinson or like him or like this other guy that I've never heard of or something. You know, this, this guy was all about conspiracies, you know, the, the Jews and, and telling me that I was the reason that Trump was elected. <laughs> It's pathetic, it's so childish, and it's absolutely useless. But, okay, I was polite and I played along. It was like he kept denying that he had anything in common with Tommy Robinson. I can't deny what has not been established. So I was just truthfully speaking my mind, and he did not like that. And we now turn to why I am criticizing Islam and after having clarified that I don't critique Muslims as such and not the spiritual part of Islam, but the political side. I even provide an example when asked for one. And for the many options, I mean, I just randomly picked misogyny. I could have picked anything else, but I picked misogyny. When asked what misogynistic aspect I was talking about, Again, from the many options, I picked the example of women being coerced into covering themselves behind the barrier, this, this hijab, in its various forms. Now, in, instead of addressing anything, the guy exploded into multiple whataboutisms the, to Kwakwa fallacy. It turns out he did not even know what misogyny actually is. And instead of addressing the issue in Islam or asking questions or finding out or probing or whatever, he came up with, well, you guessed it, the Jews. You, 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 you won't say anything about the Jews, but yet you, everything is about Islam. When the very same people are, do the exact same thing, the Hasidic Jews have their own little system in New York. Have their own I condemn system them. In I they condemn. Have their own Can you listen? They I am condemning. I'm here with strongly condemning any misogynistic ideas that the Hasidic Jews have. I will condemn them for this, okay? What else do you want me to do? Well, one tiny sect, the Hasidic Jews, apparently cover their women. Do they? No, they don't. But come on, they are just as deluded and crazy as fundamentalist Muslims are or anyone else who is indoctrinated with, with the funny God ideas. Where yes, Hasidic women are required to cover their hair, replacing it with wigs which in my eyes is, is the same sort of you know, ancient superstition, useless today. But this Muslim pinhead now claimed Jews did the same as Muslims, which they don't, and that I failed to answer, which I did. And here's his claim and what I said earlier. Uh, 
what was it, misogyny in Islam. And I said, what type of misogyny? They said, oh, I just don't like the way they, you, they, they cover up women. So I said, what about um, uh, Hasidic Jews? They cover their women up from head to toe in black. Do you not dislike them? Or do you, like yeah. the, or do you dislike their misogyny? I think the straight away he says, what type of games is this? He wouldn't answer. I'm here with strongly condemning any misogynistic ideas that the Hasidic Jews have. Now, I was censored after a while and then simply left. But I heard them on, on, on a YouTube stream where the people continued spreading lies. Yeah, they keep talking about Islam, blah, blah, blah. This is So, so let's talk about their religion. And look, the guy didn't you know, were they disrespectful? You asked them simple questions and they decided... You answer. They you answer. answer. There you go. Yeah. So I went back and took this asshole to task. He accuses me of being a Jew. He accuses me of protecting the Jews. Where I have very clearly said... <sighs> I do not protect the Jews. I condemn the misogyny in Judaism. I very clearly said this several All right. times. What is amazing is that he repeated his previous claim. And he was this time even backed up by the host, both lying. Now, the host normally stays back and admits, unlike the others, that he has not even read the complete Quran. And here is the fact. The, uh, this is the reality where I did exactly what they said I did not do. Yes, I hate misogyny in ev any misogyny. It doesn't matter All whether right. it's Judaism, this Christianity, misogyny. Hinduism or whatever. So why are they so weak, so incompetent that they need to lie? I don't need to lie. So why do they? Why do these Muslims need to lie? Now, they continued their attack on my person instead of addressing my points, claiming I had an agenda. And this is the host, a person who claims he is normally neutral and not taking any side. Tell me what it is. What is it that you dislike? But they won't. Is their agenda? <laughs> no, no, it actually gets quite comical. This fool and, and the, 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 this conspiracy lover, they, they, they can't address my points. So... This, this conspiracy guy thinks he's clever, so unbelievably clever, accusing me of imposing my views on women and their dress code, when I had been adamant that I was demanding equal rights, equal human rights, and not the right to go topless in town. All they want to do is just want to force their way of dressing onto, onto women. 100 percent and that that's one of the worst men i can't stand is the is the feminist man you know that type of guy he's like and you they're see, not those even are the, men the, they're those not are even the worst men. creeps usually those feminist guys are like the worst creeps you know weirdos like, yeah a femi how can you be a man and a feminist but that's what these primitive people understood a longer explanation where i also mentioned a nudist speech what was still present in their brains only the nudist speech. These must be perverts as I desperate to protect their frail God and his despotic servant, sexually depraved at the same time, like little boys. Because I stand up for women's rights and gender equality. I'm not even a real man when it comes to them, where feminism is equated with effeminate. Let me assure you, there's a lot of evidence to the contrary. And now let the slander begin because they've run out of everything that they can say. So what? Yeah. Now, d d just to be clear, the Quran says in sixteen one twenty five that Muslims should definitely explain their belief to non-Muslims and in the nicest possible way. That's their God speaking to them. Did they behave like good little Muslim apologists? Nope. The Quran also says in 3119 that the harshest of voices is the voice of the ass, the, the donkey. And it gets very specific, reminding Muslims in 1411, they should not insult one another and do not call each other by offensive nicknames. That's their God speaking to them. Did these guys behave like good little Muslim apologists? No. It gets really wild, where subtle wording is not exactly at the top of my list of positive character traits. I pale in comparison to a Muslim here. What is an Islamophobe? It's like um, it's like a Nazi, but again, Muslim. An Islamophobe is a Nazi, so who is a Nazi? You. 
topic. That's why I call you a creepy feminist. Because you believe, as a man, that you can walk up to a naked woman and treat her the same as a woman you can't see anything with. Fuck that. It's hey, it. fuck things. Where, where'd you get this thing about the raping raping a woman? Fucking liar. Where's your, where, where'd you get it? Fuck face. You fucking dirty kaffir. The fuck, man? Hey, go on, go on. Go on. Go on. Fucking piece of shit. Holy fuck. Who the fuck's this guy, man? Fucking dirty kaffir. Just bring the fucking proof. Or shut your fucking cocksucker. How about that? <laughs> fucking dirty kaffir. Bro, no, hey, brother, hey, tell, this, this, guy, this guy, this guy, this type of guy, he gets his wife, puts the strap on, and gives it to him. <laughs> this is the type of guy they were talking to. You guys this have such a filthy You friggin' filthy kaffir. <laughs> you filthy, you friggin' half, you half, you're half a man. You and it comes in two distinct phases where the one can't handle that a woman can have a personality and looking at her naked boobs, it, it doesn't change that. I can treat a woman with the same politeness and display the same courteous behavior even when looking at her bosom. The naked bosom. What is wrong with that? And it seems these Muslims in these podcasts are unable to do so. Like giggling like little boys while accusing me of being a human being. What did I do to attract this ayah? I quoted a saying of Prophet Muhammad, which according to Islamic scholars is classified as authentic, part of what Sunni Muslims follow. Now, I did not write this. I'm just the one quoting it. So, there we go. A Muslim apologist on his best behavior. I'm just quoting. It's not you're my filthy, fault. I'm you know, quoting you're a filthy hadith. little piece of shit. That's what you are. You're a cockroach. You're a filthy fucking dirty kaffir. That's what you are. You friggin' dirty kaffir. You pig. You friggin' cockroach. Hey, listen. Yo, kaffir, if you were on fire, I wouldn't piss on you. And what happened next is that I, I settled down to have a civilized discussion with a guy who was able to string words together to form a sentence. And I quite enjoyed leading him into the Quran using only concepts and then started on, you know, to go on to show him how inconsistent and useless the Quran actually is. Unfortunately, just when I was getting to the point, some idiot and an incredibly rude, arrogant woman joined and disrupted the conversation with the usual Islamic apologist crap. I told them to go fuck off and leave me to end my conversation first because I would have dealt with them, you know, like a little bit later. But like this, this obnoxious woman would not shut up. The guy I was talking to saw his chance and ran, claiming he had to go and do stuff. Again, now it was just a matter of the standard censorship kicking in, with the people you can't refute or handle intellectually are silenced. And this is what happened here too. Good thing. Anyway, Faz, get rid of him. We're too tired of listening to him anyway. He spoke about women's rights when it's Muslim women's rights when what was it an hour ago? Finally, the host comes out of hiding, declares victory. If I, if I kicked him off, you couldn't have exposed him. Jordan couldn't have exposed him. Ibrahim couldn't have exposed him. And then we would have had the best bit from Uncle oh, sorry, Omar Abdullah. And the guy in the chat who told them, all eight or ten of them, they had been mentally violated by two atheists, was booted and blocked for good, for telling the truth. Oh, and after I'd been kicked out, the guy I had talked to suddenly came back and had a lot to say when I had no chance of calling out his lies. And Rob is right. Listening to their analysis, where they openly admitted that we would have been all over them if they had not ganged up on us. But but can you see can you see the the advantage now, Jordan? When you have a panel and you've got brothers and sisters there, I didn't know all this. I'm lucky you were here. Ke Lada Kels was here, and then Ibrahim came, and then Omar was just sleepy again and he just woke up. But the, the, but this is the but no. But if I was on my own on another panel, these guys would be walking all over us. Whereas it together here is different. And that's something they can't do in the gin and tonic. And, that's, and Rob is right here. That's why we will never see them there. They are simply too dishonest because they are too weak. Oh, well, can't win them all. Cheerio, bye. I'm here with strongly condemning any misogynistic ideas that the Hasidic Jews have. I will condemn them for this, okay? What else do you want me to do?